Um, the reason that I'm, I'm asking for these visits is there's a lot of interest in these both for and against, and I think it would be beneficial for the committee to actually go and see for ourselves exactly um, what the situation is there. Any other? Yeah. Sorry, okay. Sorry, yeah. um, I'd like to request a site visit for agenda item 12, which is just a normal way. Um, I think the committee will benefit from a review of the street scene and the issues that have been raised in the petition on this one as well as by the council. Okay, thank you. I'd like to ask for two site visits actually. One is for the Mel's Drive, 92 Mel's Drive. I this is a development in the conservation area which is causing a lot of problems like the things that they can have in the as it stands at the moment. The other one, I think, um, is Mill House Lane Morton. Again, another one that's been subject to controversy and people being for and against it, and I think the committee would benefit from having the opportunity to visit both those sites before and Any more? Okay, does the committee agree to those five visits? Agreed. Thank you. Um, in view of the uh, amount of people that are here, so just to reiterate really which are the site visits, um, it's agenda item six, which is Church Hall, St. Mary's Church. So if anybody is here for that, we won't be discussing that this evening. So if you'd like to leave, feel free to do so. Agenda item seven, Mill House, 79 Mill House Lane. Again, we won't be discussing that this evening. Agenda item 11, 92 Mills Drive, West Kirby. We won't be discussing that. Agenda item 12, 51 Mill Lane, Liscard. We won't be discussing that. Agenda item 15, um, on news land in Kenilworth Gardens, we won't be discussing that this evening. Though the one proposed with the current application would require permission. 
The distance is measured from the doorway to the rear elevation of the property to the rear of the application site on Far Meadow Lane, measured in excess of 21 metres, which the council would normally expect to achieve. The distance is 26 metres, and as such, privacy and overlooking is not considered to be a matter which would warrant refusal in this instance. Although it's acknowledged that the changes proposed was, would result in a change to the character of the property, and would be the only property in the street scene to have been so altered, regard has been had to what would be done under permitted development, which would result in the same changes in character and impact. As such, on balance, it is not considered that a refusal of planning permission would be sustained and the application is recommended for approval. There is a qualified petition to be Thank you, Matthew. Um, and thank you to the members who attended the site visit and, um, and the ward councillor. I think the members found the visit to be beneficial. Um, members will note that we have heard that much of the development could be carried out under permitted development, therefore, would not need to come to planning due to the relaxation in, in planning rules by the government. It should also be noted that if the dorm is reduced in size, this matter would not need to come to planning committee at all. Whilst I can sympathise with the objectors having, having some, com, uh, sorry, uh, uh, start again. Whilst I can sympathise with the objectors um, having come through the planning process, this application as it stands would impose more control over the process. Do any members want to have any comments? We do have a, a petition in relation to this item. Would the, would the petitioner like to come forward to speak? Thank you, Chair. If you could just give us uh, your name yep. and your address, and you have five minutes. If you can pull your mic down towards uh, your face, then we'll be able to hear you better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is David Byron. I live at 11 Far Meadow Lane, which is directly at the rear of 28 Sherwood Avenue. I'm one of 38 people in 28 neighbourhood homes who have signed a petition submitted to the World Planning Department objecting to this planning extension. I've been asked to represent the objections of all the petitioners. The objections are limited to two specific material planning considerations, namely overlooking the lock of pri loss of privacy and the building design which will have an incongruous and adverse impact on the overall character and style of the immediate vicinity. The planning officer's report, which forms the primary evidence for the committee in support of the application, contains a number of material errors and inaccuracies relating to the description and nature of the premises, the immediate area, as well as the degree of the adverse impact the proposed alteration will have. Committee members who visited the site earlier this week may have noted for themselves some of those errors and accuracies. Our objection is not related to the fact that the new owners of number 28 wish to extend their premises to provide additional bedroom accommodation. No, the objections relate to the design and the form of the proposed extension, which are in a manner that will fundamentally intrude on the privacy of neighbouring families and alter the bungalow in a way that is totally out of character with the original design of that bungalow, as well as adjacent and surrounding premises. The preliminary plans submitted in support of this application are loosely entitled a lot conversion. It would have been more accurate to describe them as plans to fundamentally convert a bungalow situated in the neighbor neighborhood of bungalows into a two-story house. I will now deal with the specific objections. Overlooking and loss of privacy. Article 8 of the Human Rights Act of 1998 specifies that everyone has the right to respect for his private and family life and his home. These proposed alterations will have a direct and significant adverse effect on the privacy of residents of numbers 26 and 30 Sherwood Avenue, and more particularly number 9, 11, 13, and 15 Far Meadow Lane at the rear. The proposed large dormitory window to be built in the extended roof line at the rear of number 28 will directly overlook and provide clear and unimpaired views into the private living quarters and gardens of numbers 9, 11, 13, and 15 Far Meadow Lane as well as the gardens of 26 and 30 Shield Avenue. I've asked the committee to consider some photographs which I think have been uh, circulated. Whilst those on pages 1 to 3 show the current outlook from houses opposite and adjoining, the important ones regarding privacy are those on pages 4 to 6, which clearly show how privacy would be compromised. These photographs are taken from near the rear of 28 Sherwood Avenue and from a height of approximately 11 foot. This is a height that is somewhat lower than the, the window it will be, 
and with being high will provide an even greater view of nature's private quarters and gardens. Due to the design of all the bungalows, the normal habitable living rooms are left the rear. The committee members will see for themselves how much the privacy of those in the normal day-to-day -day private living quarters of 11, 13, and 15 uh, by Lane is intruded upon and compromised. It appears clear that no consideration has been given to avoiding or minimizing the blatant and overt intrusion to the privacy of those neighbors who chose to buy and live in characteristic bungalows because of the privacy of the offer in not being overlooked. The second objection relates to the building design. This objection is common to all 38 individuals who have signed the petition. The objections are based on the grounds that the proposed plans and materials, one, do not maintain or complement the original character of the building, but rather clash and conflict with them. Two, they will not reflect the vernacular character and appearance of surrounding buildings, and as a consequence will have an incongruous impact on the setting of the area by adversely changing the overall character and style of the immediate vicinity. The residents would hope that those committee members who participated in the site visit earlier this week will have seen for themselves how much the proposed alterations will differ from the traditional design and character of all the buildings in the neighborhood. The conclusion, on behalf of 38 residents and 28 households who objected to the proposed alterations, I would ask that the committee reject the application as proposed on the grounds of one, the scale, size, design, and overall appearance of the development is over dominant and obtrusive in terms of visual impact, having regard to the character of the original dwelling and the relationship of neighboring properties. The development is therefore inappropriate having regard to the Wills UTP policy HS11 and the supplementary planning guidance note 11 house extensions. And finally, the proposal will result in an unneighborly form of development in that it would lead to the overshadowing and overlooking of the habitable rooms of adjoining and neighboring dwellings by reason of the size, height, and sighting, which would be detrimental to the amenities and occupiers of the adjoining and neighboring dwelling with reason we expect to enjoy. This, I would suggest, is contrary to policy HS4 of Willows UTP and the NPPF. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, you did very well. Keep the five minutes. Would the applicants or agent like to make some representation? Come forward, please. Okay, just just in front of you, there's a silver button on the lower part of the microphone. If you can switch that, just press that, switch it off. Um, again, you have uh, five minutes and you can just state your name and address. My name is uh, Mr. David Richardson, of 28 Sherwood Avenue. I would like to thank the Chair for coming to speak in support of this application. The proposal before you, before you for consideration <coughs> this evening is for the erection of a rail lock conversion, which has been designed to be in full compliance with the National Planning Policy Framework and also will UDP policies H11, HS11 and SPG11. The objectors have, re have raised several concerns regarding building regulations, scaffolding, and the effects of si on saleability and value of properties within the immediate area, none of which are valid planning consideration considerations or matters for this meeting. The proposal would greatly ex exceed the recommended 21 metres separation distance from habitable room windows. It also has no effect on habitable room windows to neighbouring properties. The lock conversion is to the rear of the property, therefore will have no effect on the street scene. It also confirms fully with the more, oops, sorry, with, with the more specified guidance related to setbacks and settings for lock conversion property within SPG 11. The plan also states that the altering of the room to create two bedrooms and a gable end design balance and design, balance the design, scale and appearance of the original house. The proposal is therefore acceptable having regard to will UDP policy HS11. The summary of the planning officer's decision is that the proposal is not considered to have a harmful visual effect on its surrounding or any adverse impact to amenities that the occupiers of neighbouring properties ex expect to enjoy. 
Proposals before you tonight confirms with national planning policy framework and also accords with all relevant rural UDP policies contained within HS11 and HSPG11. In conclusion, the rec recommendation of the Planning Department Professional Planning Officers is that the applicant be granted. I fully concur with the recommendation and would respectfully request that the code proposal be granted approval. Thank you, thank you for sticking with us, Simon. Do we have a Lord Councillor who'd like to speak? Would like to come forward, please? Thank you, members, um, in the chair. Thank you to everybody who um, came along to the site visit yesterday. The people who were affected by this application have asked me to speak briefly with you. They absolutely understand that anybody might wish to extend their property and is entitled to want to do so. They have the opinion that this is not a suitable change to the property in this location. So the members who came on the site will have seen that this is a bungalow amongst many. As you stood in the street, you could look to either direction, it's bungalows that you can see. 28 Sherwood Avenue backs onto the properties in Far Meadow Lane as do all the others along there. There aren't any other bungalows converted into houses with roof extensions or dormers. Um, the permitted development application number that's in your report refers to one in Merlin Close in Upton. Well, that is a development. There are a lot of dormer properties, but there aren't in Sherwood Avenue. Members who read to the site visit on Windbass will also have noticed that that's had to mount the pavement because the road is not wide enough for it to get past a single parked car. Big Norris had the same problem. It's not the wide highway in Liverpool. Whether an extension is out of character, the one on page 68, is pretty much a matter of opinion, to be honest. And uh, in the sense that this is the first, would be by the first, by definition, it is out of character for this road. Property number 30 does have windows of a bedroom and a living room facing the proposed new gable end. And that all contributes to the impact felt by neighbours. I'd like to just reiterate that if you look at the last three pages of the uh, photographs that you've seen, they seek to illustrate the intrusive impact of this proposed large rear dormer, creating windows which overlook main living rooms in the bungalows on Far Meadow Lane. We've heard that hip to gable roof conversion is permitted development. However, I would suggest that this large rear dormer is what makes it worthwhile going to the expense of uh, doing a hip to gable roof conversion. It creates space for two blind bedrooms, a bathroom, and a study. Velux windows wouldn't be intrusive in any way, really, but the dormer is. You've heard that the residents consider the scale design and overall appearance of the development as over dominant and obtrusive in terms of visual impact with regard to the character of the original dwelling and the relationship with the neighbouring properties. So I would suggest to the committee that they consider the proposal to be an unneighbourly form of development, leading to the overshadowing and overlooking of habitable rooms by reason of its size, height and sighting, which would be detrimental to the amenities the owners of joining and neighbouring dwellings could reasonably expect to enjoy. Thank you for your time. Would any of the members of the committee like to make any comments or observations?
And then on the back, um, you've got this single story kitchen extension here. Um, and then uh, the, the door across, across the back. That, that, that's what's proposed. Thanks, Chair. Uh, as one of those who went on the site visit, <coughs> it was certainly worthwhile that a couple of clarifications are going to those who weren't able to go. But the first point is that the ridge of the new development will be the same height as the existing ridge. Can you just confirm that's the case? Uh, yes, through you, Chair. This is